Majad. We'll just call him a mini brain cell. Uh, the, <laughs> the mini brain cell leader in Iran, uh, touting uh, Maitreya's arrival, strongly seeing it in November in the Bible codes. And at the same time, you see Bush just salivating at the chance to push the button uh, of a nuclear missile. Uh, and so why would they target American cities for November the same time this Iranian leader's coming in? And, and the thing that I think, I can think of two different things. Um, one is to distract media attention away from Iran if this Maitreya does arrive. Because he's not going to arrive right in Iran. He's going he's gonna to go to uh, Ethiopia. He's going to go to Mecca and Medina. And then he's eventually going to go over and take over the, the Disneyland Palace the Americans have built him in Iraq in the Green Zone. He's going to take over the palace they've built him over there. That's going to become his home base. Uh, and so I think if, if we see a destruction here of four or five cities here in America, it's to keep that attention away so the Americans don't know what's going on in the Middle East. Because at that point, we would pretty much just be focused on our own destruction here in America and nobody's paying attention uh, to some psychotic leader that the Iranians are saying has arrived. Uh, another thing is that if they have the attacks here, Americans can hurry up and justify bombing Iran uh, to try to keep this Maitreya out. Uh, but you got to think, he isn't going to Iran. Maitreya's not going to Iran right away. This Satan freak over there that leads Iran, a mini brain cell, he's just the cheerleader. He's the John the Baptist for Maitreya. He's just promoting him. Maitreya's not going to be there. Maitreya's going to be, like I said, one of the other three places. He's going to be in Ethiopia, uh, Mecca, and Medina before he moves into his Disneyland in Iraq. Uh, and so why Bush wants to bomb Iran, uh, I, you know, I'm clueless on that one. Uh, because what happens, and I don't think he ever does before Maitreya gets there to save the day, uh, because this Maitreya, when he comes, he's going to... He's going to be promising pie in the sky to all of his followers. He's going to be promising peace. Um, and what he offers is worldwide socialism and communism. Uh, and he's going to be offering a different type of society, a different type of way of life. But folks, he's the rider of the black horse. He causes the famine that's coming. You know, he's going to be preaching against hunger in Africa and around the world and third world countries. Uh, and how to help these people. <laughs> He's the one that's going to be causing their deaths. He's the rider of the black horse. Uh, and he's going to be building an army. He's not coming to build a, you know, an angelic host. <laughs> he comes with them. Um, it says that uh, in his own, you know, it says that he's going to have a gradual emergence here. He's not. He, he arrives suddenly on Earth. And it's basically going to be some kind of Hollywood production because... Uh, as I look in the Bible codes at this Maitreya's arrival, you see several different terms, and you know you're like, what? <laughs> You'll see an airdrop, a basket, a convertible helicopter. <laughs> the, the ancient Hebrews try trying to describe how this guy lands on Earth, comes to Earth. Don't die trying to spill the information out. I'll be all right. Other warriors are out there praying right now. All right, so uh, he arrives to Earth in some kind of convertible helicopter, and so you got to think about that. What's a convertible helicopter? Like a hot air balloon? Is, is my trailer going to arrive to Earth in a, in a hot air balloon? Uh, something silly. Uh, I know that uh, you'll see the term falsification and simulation in the codes, and so whatever he's doing, what we're going to see on TV isn't exactly uh, what's happening over there. It's a simulation. I know I, I, on WTC, the morning of WTC, we saw the, the planes crashing into the towers. Uh, and you saw airplanes, even though they were missiles. And so it's the same thing with Maitreya. However, he arrives. It's not exactly how he's arriving. He's actually arriving in some kind of hot air balloon. Uh, but they're going to make it look like he's descending down from the clouds or whatever. <laughs> it's really funny. Uh, and I'm sure we'll all be here to get out the popcorn and laugh about it. Uh, but it's a simulation, and so Hollywood's really working on helping him come to Earth. Um, it's just something to keep an eye on. I don't even know if we'll get to see how much of it we'll get to see. Um, he he fully intends on having a day of declaration around the world where he introduces himself. Uh, supposedly going to be on every television station around the world. I do find this to be very true. Uh, he is going to have some kind of declaration when he arrives. 
he's going to make some kind of uh, treaty with mankind or something, some kind of treaty, um, because of some kind of declaration. But the thing is, if you watch what he does, uh, immediately after he arrives, he has this day of declaration where he announces himself as the worldwide Messiah that all these different religions have been waiting for, uh, Buddha and uh, the Muslims, the Arabs, and all these different religions. Uh, but then he, he unites a kingdom, uh, a ten-nation confederacy, and this guy goes to war. He doesn't, you know, he's not here to break out the Bibles and start a revival tent meeting city to city, country to country. He's here to start war. I mean, he's coming on the back end of the red horse, which is George Bush, the war horse. He's working with, with the red horse. He's, he's coming in as the black horse rider of the apocalypse. Uh, and he's going to be the cause of all these famines that are coming. Uh, and so, there's nothing, you know, don't let your guard down. If you see this guy, like I've told people in, in Israel, uh, I've told them to get out of Israel. Uh, and so that's what, you know, when you see Maitreya, this is Maitreya uh, arrive, any Torah-believing Jews, uh, Israelites in Israel, uh, that are actually Torah-believing and, and followers of the Most High, you'll know to get out of Israel, because he's coming towards Israel. It's going to take over Jerusalem. Uh, we're going to see a world conquest of uh, Islam when Maitreya arrives. And so we're going to see a lot of uh, uh, different wars coming from this Maitreya as he tries to take the world over uh, for Islam. Uh, and so it's going to be a time of, of just more wars, more famine, more destructions, a lot of plagues. And this is typically going to uh, keep going until the rider of the pale horse arrives, which is Sananda Jesus. This is the one the churches have been conditioned and mind controlled to think. Uh, the churches have been bamboozled for years thinking that the Son of God was going to arrive during the Rosh Hashanah, the Jewish Feast of Rosh Hashanah, the Feast of Trumpets. Uh, and, ha and that's when the rapture of the church was going to take place. Uh, but it's a bunch of hogwash. Rosh Hashanah doesn't even exist outside the Talmud. Uh, in the Torah Bible, in the Torah believers, it's, it's just a Feast of Trumpets. It's two days long. Uh, if you go into the Talmud, which is the Satanic Jewish Bible, they talk about Rosh Hashanah and how it's a, a week-long event where somebody blows a trumpet every day and on the last day they, they, they blow the trumpet. And that's when the church has been conditioned with this false doctrine of the rapture to believe when he's going to arrive. Uh, and so Satan is going to accommodate all these church believers because he's been behind their doctrine and false theologies all these years to begin with. And he's going to have Samanda arrive during Rosh Hashanah and, you know, the Christians are expecting the Son of God. And here they see Jesus coming in the clouds with a host of angels. And what they are, these alien, these ugly alien beings uh, with these devices that can make them glow and look like angelic beings. It's going to be quite the show. Uh, and so this will happen in the September, I believe, of 2009. Uh, totally catching the church off guard because they fully expect the rapture. Fully expecting Yahushua, the Son of God, and they are going to get the Sananda Jesus. They've been worshiping all their years in the churches as this Jesus.